One of the things that worried me the most when I first became an HVAC technician was condemning a good control board. Really no feeling like billing a customer $800 only to find out that wasn't actually the problem. When I finally understood how series and parallel circuits are used by control board, I started to see things that even schematics weren't showing me, and my confidence in diagnosing control boards went up. So let's cover the difference between series and parallel real quick, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now on a series circuit, the electricity has to flow through everything in that circuit one at a time to get back to its power source. So if any one of those components open, the entire circuit goes dead. In a parallel circuit, however, each source has its own path from the power source and back. So if a switch opens somewhere in that circuit, the others can remain running, even though that one shuts down. So let me pull up this schematic. It's for a furnace. And if you look at the control board on here, you'll see a Molex plug with a whole bunch of wires coming off of it. Now, if you ever trace these out, you might see, for example, a red wire coming off the Molex plug. It goes through your high limit switch by the heat exchanger, maybe goes through another high limit that's located on the blower casing, or maybe it's on the furnace exhaust, the flue pipe, and then it comes back to the Molex plug on, in this case, a pink wire. And then maybe you see another purple wire coming off the Molex plug going through your flame rollouts and then coming back on, in this case, another purple wire back to the Molex again. Same thing with a pressure switch, maybe a pair of yellow wires, and then you have one going to the gas valve and back. Everything leaving the Molex and coming back to the Molex. And this all definitely seems like the Molex plug is putting out 24 volts on each one of these loops and each one's sending it back. And that sounds an awful lot like a parallel wiring setup. Each component has its own power source and path back. But that's not the actual purpose of control board design with these Molex plugs. Whenever it comes to safeties in a burner circuit, whether it's a furnace, a hydronic boiler, a steam boiler, all these safeties are always going to be wired in series. So this Molex wiring arrangement is no different than if you had just one wire coming out of the Molex, going through the high limit switches, then through the flame rollout switches, then through the pressure switch, and then finally to the gas valve, with no other wires coming back outside of the common from the gas valve itself. It still has to travel through each component one by one, and there are no other paths. What a control board is actually doing with these Molex connections is that each wire coming back from each one of the components is a little nodule. It's a tap point that the control board can read the voltage in different parts of that series circuit. So if 24 volts leaves the Molex plug, it makes it to the high limit switch, goes back to the Molex, and the Molex can confirm we have 24 volts that far into the circuit. Then it goes to the flame rollout switch, but if it doesn't make it back to the Molex plug, the control board can now see that's where it's failing in a circuit, and it can throw out the appropriate error code. Now a lot of older units, they don't have this set up. They can't tap into different parts of the circuit and throw an error code that specifically says where it's failing. So if you're not getting 24 volts to the gas valve, you have to manually hopscotch through the circuit one component at a time until you find out where the voltage is stopping. High voltage circuits on most of these units, they're almost always going to be parallel. So for a furnace, for example, the inducer draft motor, the blower motor, the hot surface igniter, each one has a power source of its own. The control board can control each one independently. The same is true for condensing units, the compressor and the condenser fan motor, both same source of power, both have paths back, both can run independently. When it comes to tap speeds for a blower motor, those are usually parallel as well. Blower can only run at one speed at a time, so all these different taps, only one needs to be operational while the others don't have to be. Thermostat wiring between the control board and the thermostat itself also parallel circuits. That's the only way we can activate heating mode without cooling mode activating or vice versa. When you understand how control boards use series wiring and parallel wiring, and then you overlay the sequence of operations on top of that, it becomes very, very clear where you need to test the control board and when you need to test it there to see if the control board is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing and whether or not it's time to condemn it.